The bottom line is if he continues to lose, the club will have no choice. We're joined by Stan sport football expert Mark Bosnich ahead of a big week of European football. Stan's feature game on Thursday morning at 5.35am will be Manchester United versus Atalanta, which is your former club, Bozza. Uh, yeah. Manchester United have obviously, they're struggling lately, three games in the Premier League without a win and also the 4-2 win, uh, 4-2 loss against Leicester on the weekend. Tell us about your thoughts about how they're going. It, it's difficult and I, I always say this right at the beginning as well, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is an ex-teammate of mine and, and I think the world of him. Uh, he was an exceptional player, one of the best finishers I've ever played with. So. Um, I, I will be biased, um, but it, it, the bottom line is, um, you know, old friend or not, uh, things at the moment aren't travelling too well. Uh, it's it, that's an understatement, if you like. Um, they had the initial euphoria with Ronaldo joining. Um, I thought they were doing quite well at the start of the season, um, but the last, at least the last three or four games, uh, is starting to show up a, a few little deficiencies um, in the way that they're approaching things. I think the ironic thing is. In the last four games, when they've, where they've lost two, uh, drawn one, won one, um, all the teams they've played against have, have averaged a, a collective of 37% possession. And they've all defended pretty much with a low block um, and they're getting caught on the counter. It can be highly frustrating. Uh, there's no doubt about that. In terms of the attack, uh, it's you look at Liverpool, Chelsea, City, they seem to have clear plans to break down uh, the, the teams with the low blocks and it's almost as, if, as you mentioned that teams are hedging their bets by defending deep and then knowing that they're going to get you know chances on the counter to score if you were managing Manchester United how would you I guess like in terms of how the attacks function at the moment they've obviously gone to crossing a fair bit which they never really used to do um, before Ronaldo came it used yeah. to be more you know trying to get in behind etc how would you set up the attack to get the best out of it uh, just like a goalkeeper can only be as good as the defense in front of him a striker can only be as good as the service that he receives. Um, so th they know Ronaldo inside out and they'll know obviously with the crosses, with his aerial threat and that as well. That's very, very important. And there's no problem with that. The thing is with anything when you're attacking is not to become too predictable. And that's why I'm always reluctant if I'm talking to teams or whatever or coaches and this, that and the other. Um, it's not a problem to have people in certain positions, but if you start to get too structured in attack, it becomes very predictable. The quickness of passing is very, very important when you're breaking down a defense, especially a five-man defense, okay? And especially in view of the fact if, if you haven't got a massive tall striker. Now, they have got Ronaldo, but it wouldn't be the Manchester United way just to start launching it to him. There's no doubt about that. And there's a far more imaginative things that they can do. So no problem to keep that possession in the middle and to allow time for those fullbacks to go wide. The problem comes in is when you start losing possession and they start hitting you the other way. So two things happen then. Number one, it puts doubt in the mind of the fullback to come forward because I'm coming forward, you know, 50, 60 metres. All of a sudden I have to run back and we're in trouble as well. And it makes the team reluctant to start, you know, basically, you know, taking chances in that final third to be a little bit more fluid. An area of concern for Manchester United is obviously in the middle of the park. Uh, Paul Pogba is, is an enigma. Um, yeah, he started off the season playing on the left wing uh, and played some amazing football. I think he had four or five assists in his first few games. But with the attacking yeah. talent coming into the team, he's had to shift back uh, to, to be almost as part of the midfield too. And he seems to almost be caught in between attacking and defending and he gets caught out of position. And as an extension, um, Fred yeah. struggled. McTominay has been injured. And also, um, Nemanja Matic, great player, but he could be starting to you know, get a bit long in the legs at his age. How do you, what do you make of the midfield and sort of how would you set it up to be successful? I actually think at this moment in time, um, with the absence of, of a Kante or, or someone like that alongside him, they need his athleticism and energy when they're defending. So I think he should be playing in the centre of midfield. I still believe that they, they only need one holder. I can understand why Oli was playing two holders in, in McFred, if you want to call it McTominay and Fred. But Paul Pogba is one of the best players in the world and he needs to do that both from an offensive and defensive perspective. So far as I'm concerned, he's got the energy to be the floater um, in attack. And that means making an extra man. It's very, very important, uh, especially, well, always has been, but especially in the modern game, that you don't get outnumbered in midfield. They've got to get other players into midfield. One of the great things that Tuchel's done at Chelsea 
is to make sure in the three thirds of the park, very rarely are they outnumbered. And midfield, that's absolutely vital. If you get outnumbered in midfield, you're, you're pretty much saying to the other team, well, look, listen, you know, we're going to be happy to defend and hit you on the counter attack. I think for the time being, um, like I said to you, he needs to be one of the pivots and that's going to be vitally important go going forward. The other thing to take into consideration as well, Kieran, is the fact that he's currently in negotiations with Manchester United for a contract. So it, it, it must be so difficult, even if they turn around and think to themselves, the coaching staff, oh, maybe should today from a tactical perspective, maybe should we leave him? If they leave him out now, right this moment in time, I can't see him resigning. Now, a lot of people may turn around and say, well, that's not a bad thing. I, I don't think you can afford to lose a player like Paul Pogba, okay? That, that may be proven wrong, but right this moment in time, I think the answer to that is no. Your former teammate, uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, um, he's been under pressure a number of times over the last three years, but he's always seemed to have, the team seemed to have lifted when it's got to that point. I remember they were playing Burnley a couple of years ago in December and it was at a real low point and they won that game and continued on. It's a similar point now, you know, the team is struggling, uh, the, the club's obviously backed Ole and there's no suggestion that he's going to be sacked, but you look at the run of fixtures coming up, you know, they've got Liverpool, Tottenham, Manchester City, Chelsea, Arsenal over the next six weeks and, and also the Champions League games, which will be on stand, the Atalanta and Villarreal games. Uh, how do you think it's going to go for Ole? Um, are, are you worried at all about him? I am a little bit. Um, and like I said at the start of the conversation, I am biased, um, like I said, and I want him to do well really, really badly. But I am a little bit concerned at the moment because the bottom line is if he continues to lose, the club will have no choice. OK, and, and that's and I, and I think Oli will know that and, and everyone knows that. Um, but like I said, and, and, and that's what concerns me. Um, but look, three years, like I said, is a, is a clutch time. Um, I remember Sir Alex Ferguson after three years, um, you know, people wanted him out badly really badly. I remember the crowd staying back after one game against Crystal Palace, basically baying, you know, baying for his blood, like basically saying we, we, we want him out. And literally, what, four months later, they won the FA Cup and the rest is history. So clubs have got to hold their nerve. There's no doubt about that. But there does come a time, regardless of how much backing you give somebody, when um, the results on the pitch make it an inevitability. Um, I, like I said, I can see what he's doing. A lot of people can't, but I can see what he's trying to do. It's just that it's not being executed at the moment. This is a crucial time. That three-year thing, it's either you see what's going to happen and you stick with that person or you go the other way. But I will say this from a Manchester United perspective, you know, they've had a lot of managers since Sir Alex. Um, and look, there will never be another Sir Alex Ferguson, um, but it takes time. But I do believe that they, you know, that they need to win a trophy. And really, and realistically at this moment in time, I don't really think you could say, I wouldn't rule it out, but I don't think from what I've seen so far after, I think, eight games that you could say the league title. Champions League, I don't think so either. The FA Cup's really the only one left at the moment. But um, like I said, all's not lost. Um, but if they keep losing, all will be.